Hello gamers, my name is Duma and welcome to the game room. Are you ready? My body is ready. We have a huge update to one of the most popular builds on the channel, the one bar PVP bow blade, and this thing is not your mama's bow blade build. This one is built different, pun intended. It's a dot based build. Roll the highlight reel. When's the last time you got to play a one bar bow build like this? Or like this? Could it do this? How about 3 million damage in a BG? Live through IC ganks? How about being able to do this nonsense and bleed out players in the middle of a huge fight in Cyrodiil with Siege up? Something should be jumping out at you on your screen right now. I'll wait. But where's the stealth though? That's right, stealth is optional. This one is all the way full throttle redonkulous. Tanky builds are ridiculous right now. Health is through the roof. Some people are legitimately rolling around in 64 points in health on damage builds. Resistances are being ran high. Healing is totally OP and has been for ages. And shields just got a buff. Each one of these can shut down a snipe build, except for maybe healing on low health targets, right? Well, we got them all right now at the same time. It's rough out there. So we need to adapt rather than keep throwing ourselves up against literally brick walls. That's why all these little airsoft, lethal arrow, swamp raider, or like tarnished nightmare bow builds you've probably tried aren't working for you. And why probably some of you are here right now, am I right? You know how I know? Because I had the same experience with my builds and I know that they're solid. Those builds just do not perform like they used to right now, as consistently anymore. That's the takeaway. It's time to adapt to the meta. I'm also going to spend a few more minutes on this guide for you. I think you and the build both deserve it on this one. I wanted to make one of my perfected big budget videos for this one but I just simply don't have the time right now. I also found something very excited I want to show you for this video as well about gear. Are you in? All right, let's get it. Stamina base race or Khajiit is going to be ideal here. We have all 64 points in stamina, a stage two vampire, which is necessary for the dark stalker and strike from the shadows vampire passives. I don't recommend stage three. The sustain is too rough and not worth what you lose to accommodate it. Mundus and food can change based on individual ability. I recommend every person, even if you're good at the game, to just give me the benefit of the doubt here and start with using serpent Mundus to feel it out a little bit. It's got a bit of a strange sustain flow, especially if not using stealth. It's not bad, it's just different. You'll see when you try it. I recommend pairing that with Arteum Takeaway Broth. You'll actually use this food 99% of the time most likely. It's the perfect well-rounded food to keep up a safe health level to prevent one shots while also giving us more stamina and sustain. What I personally do is I run it with Lava Foot Soup and the Shadow Mundus at times, which is going to be significantly more damage, but I'm just trying to be honest with you so you have a clear expectation. Not everyone is going to be able to do that. If you think you can get away with it, try it. If it doesn't work out, for you, fall back to the first setup of Serpents in RTM Takeaway Broth. It's a much safer way to play the build, and you'll still have plenty of damage. But if you've developed the skill set already, I definitely encourage you to also try out the second version. Okay, for gear, I'm pumped to show you this. This is going to work on so many classes and builds, I can't wait to try it out after this video on a PvP bow crow I'm working on. So the first thing I did is put our build on the table with Lethal Arrow, Swamp Raider, and New Moon. For our first round of testing, Swamp Raider stayed at our core, and then I paired that with all the things. Stat sets, proc sets, crit sets, all the sets. Which, by the way, quick sidebar, if you still want to play a traditional snipe build after you've watched this video, regardless that it's weaker because you enjoy it more, which I totally get, then I found Order's Wrath to be one of the better options paired with Swamp Raider here. Hey, look, two builds in one video. <laughs> I'm kidding. Okay, so most proc sets are terrible. I was pretty excited about Tarnished Nightmare, but it felt awful as well. Uh, you can use that for like people in the 20k HP range, newer people, people looking at their maps. That's gummy stuff. After days of disappointment with Swamp Raider and Lethal Arrow, I scrapped everything realizing that the bow burst thing just isn't the move right now. Yeah, you can do it, but ugh, it's oftentimes just a shadow of its former self through this meta. So one very strong way to chew through this meta is dots. Lots and lots of hard hitting dots. It's what so many builds are right now. Think about all the meta builds, Master Dual Wield, Vatisher and Ice Staff, nine bars of dots. It's being done because it works. How about we play ball with the bow builds? One of the king of dots is Way of Fire. I use it on every single one of my characters for different builds. All your favorite PVPers are likely using it or have used it. It's probably one of the best investments for your time to farm for PVP. That said, update 42 is around the corner, so I plead the fifth if it ends up nerfed there. I'm not doing like a wink wink thing. I don't know, I'm just saying. it's 
been OP for a while, so it wouldn't surprise me if it's tuned up a bit. I then paired that with every stat, crit, and dot set I had access to. Dudes, look at this. I'm sure some of y'all may have known this, but I legit just found this out on accident. This legitimately would be one of the most broken things in PvP right now. Literally. This is how I'm hitting 2-3 to three million damage in BGs with one bar, a bow, and dots. I genuinely did not know that way of fire operates in this way with poison eject. Okay, this is one single button I'm going to press, and I'm just going to let it roll and let you see. That's one button on one person. I kind of feel like this should not be working like this, but it is what it is. Here's the log. This extra craziness is coming from Sheer Venom. Poison Inject keeps both sets of Sheer Venom and Way of Fire procking for 22 seconds. No matter what the build is, they're going to feel that. That's going to contribute to a lot of resource drain and attention from almost anyone. They'll be forced to roll more heals, shields, purges, whatever. This is huge pressure in your favor. Now, that's one person. How about one button on a whole team in something like BGs? Imagine the team pressure. Now imagine you roll that on both enemy teams. Imagine the map pressure that adds. That's with one button. We haven't even gotten started yet. Do I have your attention now? Okay, let's look at some gear. Way of Fire is a heavy set, so we need it in specific places, and that's the shoulders, neck, ring, and bow. The other set is sheer venom on the body. Then we have Oaken Soul, and all that's topped off by either Slime Crawl or Magma if you need more sustain, but try to use Slime first. We're pushing our crit as high as we reasonably can as well. One thing I've been liking doing for you lately, if you've been around stream or watching recent videos, is test the builds as you would first get them. So, scuff traits, missing this or that, like you just farmed the gear, you just threw it on, you may not have the time to transmute and all everything. What's that gonna feel like? I golded this out at the end dish of all the testing. This was mostly purple, and I left all of these bad traits here as well, which I'm gonna come back to here in a bit, because it's pretty significant. Now, I'm taking this time to make a specific point here I really want you to see. I wanted this run and gun up in the business play style to be viable. It had to be for this to work correctly. You can't reliably keep everything dotted and then snap, turn, and tunnel targets down around you from the horizon. It's too limited. So my point is, I would tell you, go well-fitted traits head to toe to abuse dodge rolls, which I did with only one well-fitted trait, and it still performed that incredibly well. So if you take this, roll it out with well-fitted head to toe, you will have a significantly stronger version than what I play tested, both offensively and defensively. I thought that was a really cool aspect of this setup strength. It's legit built different. You need to try and try and chant as much as you can. I know it's expensive, but it matters here. Quite a lot, actually. You're going to want the extra mag and health, not just the stam for max damage hand. Infused with all the jewelry with weapon damage and chance. You want a precise bow for more crit rating? I like this better than sharpened because one, all of these dots can crit and it helps square away some of the bit of defensive weakness with more crit healing, which you're going to want in some of these team fights. When played correctly, you'll be outputting more damage than the people around you very often because of the nature of this build and its mobility. You just simply have the freedom to do so. It's not that this is better or worse, it's just the nature of the build. So the sharpened loss here, you won't really even know it. The damage is through the roof. Then last, either double dot poisons or stamina is escape is poisons. Most of the time I run double dot, but if I have particularly pissed off certain people and get in focus, I'll swap to escape is for a bit more defensive strength. This is a really fun and effective build and Cyrodiil and Imperial City as well. For that CP in the blue tree, we have Reaving Blows, Raffle Strikes, Deadly Aim, and Thaumaturge. In the red tree, Balance Vitality, Slippery, Rejuvenation, and Celerity. For our abilities, we have Poison Ejection. Centerpiece of the build. Put it on everyone, all the time, always. If someone doesn't have numbers ticking above their head, shoot them in the mouth with poison injection. That simple. Shadowy Disguise, stealth, straightforward here. Using this regularly will also keep up our strike from the shadows vampire passive for extra weapon damage. Now this is where things can get weird. Here's your no stealth option. I tried it all and there is one main shining star here and that is siphoning attacks. This does so much for us. The first thing is it heals you every second you're doing damage. And what you see this, just putting dots on someone is doing damage. So you'll have free heals with your dots passively. It also helps with both Magicka and stamina to sustain, which we need. And then the big one, it's a free stamina and magicka potion at the cost of health. Look at this clip here. I'm totally gassed out in this BG getting focused. No potion. And had I not had access to this ability to spam and refill my resources, I would be dead for sure. Be smart on its use though. Because
because it does cost health. As long as you have your dots out there rolling and your vigor rolling, you should have plenty of heals. But wait, there's more. I always say the passives are the engine of the build, but you need to check and see what's going on. By adding this, we get three more big benefits as well for the no stealth option. And that's more max magicka, 3% more healing, and passive extra ultimate regeneration. Altogether, very significant in the long run. For our spammable, some of you aren't gonna like this, but if you just give me the benefit of the doubt here and get used to it, I promise you, you'll thank me. It's crushing weapon. I rarely put crushing because I always get pushback because people don't like to use it or Ellie weapon, which I get, but it's just so nasty on this setup, I'm going to really encourage you to try it. This is a Sigic ability, and how it works is when you use it, you have two seconds to light attack for its bonus damage. It confuses people because the light attack after the press is when the damage happens, and in people's minds, when you light weave, the light attack comes before the ability. So they struggle to fall in rhythm with it as a spammable. You're still doing the exact same flow. Nothing changes at all. Light attack crushing, light attack crushing, light attack crushing, just like you would any spammable. You just just don't get the bonus damage on the opening light attack. That's it. Okay, let's look at what it does. It causes our next light attack to do bonus damage and applies major breach, reducing their resistances. Huge. If you mess up or don't get to use it in those two seconds, it refunds some of the stamina cost as well. Another big benefit. You also get access to a little RNG shield from the concentrated barrier passive that will be up randomly for you to weave in blocks. And you also get an additional damage source randomly from the passive spell orb. And arguably the biggest benefit of this skill, you can combo it with another skill in the same global, which we'll go over here in just a second. All of this together in one package is just huge for this setup. Vigor, standard stuff here, our minor resolve buff and a burst heal over time. Merciless resolve. This is our big burst ability. When you light attack, you build stacks up to five, increasing your weapon damage. At five stacks, you can use this ability for huge burst damage, which also heals you for a large percentage of the damage if you are in melee range, which you will be rolling around and whatnot, getting busy in the middle of team fights. You want to run around sitting at five stacks for the extra passive weapon damage until you're ready to burst someone down. Don't just arbitrarily dump this out for random damage all the time. Sit on it sometimes in those intense moments. I told you that you could combo crushing with other abilities. Now let's put that together with Merciless Resolve. So here we have built our stacks, sitting on five with our proc ready to go. For a very basic burst combo, we press Crushing Shock, Light Attack Weave into Merciless Resolve. Let's look at that. Pretty good burst for one global on a dot build, right? Some of you are probably thinking, why why didn't we light attack before the crushing? Normally, if you're just randomly tunneling into someone in the chaos of a fight, you would use a light attack like any other spammable. But if you're trying to slip in surprise huge bursts, adding the pre-light attack doubles your damage dealing time from one global to two, which that may not sound like much, but proficient players are going to slip your damage in even less time than that. One global is very often the difference between a kill or not, and for a whole global, you gain one light attack when used in this manner. You can mix it up and do other swirly things in there with it, but for a simple, clean, easy, no fuss, one global burst combo, crushing light attack resolve. I'm taking this time to explain these extra things so you can have these tools and start putting some of this way of thinking on your radars. That's just one tiny example of how many layers you can add to something like a one bar build to really elevate its play by having all these different variables you can do depending on the situation. All that talk we did was just about two little buttons and one little global time frame. Imagine all the fancy nonsense you can pull off once you really get proficient and have a high level of mastery at a build like this. For our ultimate, there's two options. Merciless Dawnbreaker, fantastic on the build. Boost all of our damage with the Fighter Skill Passive Slayer, and you can have great team fight presence with it, smacking groups with bursts and stuns. It also adds that on you stun into the mix, so you can use it as you see fit for the situation to secure a kill or escape. Our other option, Incapacitating Strike, known as NCAP, does burst damage, stuns them if you have enough ultimate, and then something super great for this build, since it's dot based, is it increases your damage by 20% for 12 seconds. So you can do a little dishonorable stunt like this where you have someone dotted up in a team fight and you can't quite get in there to get busy but you can do this quick little in cap drive by and then boom all your dots just got juiced by 20% on them and now they're really struggle bussing. Now let's apply a previous lesson to that with crushing. Same scenario but we add the preloaded up crushing burst to it. Now they have all that extra damage and have major breach on them. You starting to see the levels and layers now how you can really make some waves with one bar builds? Now I want you to think about this. Think about the player sitting in the back lobbing lethal arrows, of which most people are shrugging off or avoiding. Now imagine
imagine that same player bringing this to the team. Instant massive elevation to the whole group. I do want to share one more thing on stealth and dodge rolls before we wrap up. Some of y'all gotta stop stealthing like this. This is why you keep dying. I see it seven days a week. The reason you can't stay in stealth because it's so simple to just flare or inner light or whatever you down in a straight line. You need to mix it up and be unpredictable with every stealth global. Always pivot unless you have a ton of range. Your dodge roll gives you a bit of an iframe, so use that. Dodge roll into stealth, instantly pivoting into another direction. Dodge roll from stealth, so you come out of stealth into an iframe back into stealth. Roll vigor beforehand, so you get maximum value from it, ticking while in iframes in stealth. Unless you know you have distance, the second you press stealth, you need to be pivoting the same global you press it. And you need to abuse the dodge rolls. The concept is literally built into the build. So if you aren't using it, you're weakening the build. Not only are you avoiding damage and making yourself very erratic and an undesirable target to try and chase down, but you're also proccing Mazer Expedition from bow passes to give you your movement speed. Without it, you're dead in the water. Boom, it's that easy, gamers. I hope to run into y'all in BGs and Cyrodiil, and I look forward to having my entire day ruined with a million dots from you. Seriously though, please enjoy the build, take it, make it yours. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments and I'll see if I can help you out. Here's a little gameplay. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.